So before I show you this video of this Rochester school board, I want to give you a little backstory. So what happened was the president, who is a liberal, took it upon herself to negotiate this interim superintendent's contract without consulting the board and basically just said, OK, here he is. And what you're going to see is the community, the parents and community members are very upset that there wasn't a process that was followed, that they didn't include all the other school board members kind of input on these things. So you're going to see the whole dynamic of this on people very upset. And then you're going to see the school board members kind of talk about their feelings on it. But they still, since it's a liberal majority, they still went ahead and voted this guy in as a superintendent, interim superintendent, excuse me. And you're going to see the couple school board members who were very upset on them not being included on the conversation. And they were trying to kick this back for 30 days, but it didn't go through. So again, this is just going to show you what these school boards are up against uh, one another. I mean, their lines have been drawn in the sand and um, hopefully in the future, there's going to be more great people that run and we can just start bringing some common sense issues or solutions to these type of situations. It's just unfortunate. And I'm seeing this all across America, but more and more great people are running and they're winning. So if you're in this community, vote these folks out who are not representing you. That's the most important thing that you can do and then bring common sense solutions to the equation. So here it is. Um, I would just say that, um, you know, my position did not change with this interview. Um, and when I was looking for candidates, I mean, my biggest thing was someone who would be able to work with every member sitting at this board table. Um, along with hoping to bring some um, ability to, if we can heal at the board table, that we might be able to work on some of that in our community as well. I think we've seen he's calm, he's level-headed, he's willing to answer difficult questions. Um, and what I heard over and over again um, from people I talked to was just his immense integrity. So. Um, I will be voting yes on this as well tonight. Did anyone have any additional comments before we go to public comment? All right, is there any public comment at this time? I didn't get to hear your whole interview, but what I got was very exciting. Um, you're addressing your point of the reason why he answered because of the kids. Well, if it's because of the kids that he enjoyed the reason why, then he would stay at his first position and focus his main attention on hiring other superintendents to help out more kids, not trying to do two jobs and to help one school district out and let another three or four school districts fall through. He also stated that he um, doesn't want to come in and make a whole bunch of changes. But then he also stated on top of that that there's no difference between the interim you know, long-term superintendent. Well, then if there's no difference between an interim and a long-term, that means that he doesn't want to come in and do a whole lot of changes. Contradictive in speech. This guy works with a lot of circular reasoning. He speaks well. That's good, and it sounds smooth. But he's just in it for the money from everything that I've heard. He says this job's going to be drinking like from a fire hose. But then he also wants to work two jobs. Which is it? Is it going to be drinking from a fire hose or is it going to be working two jobs? What do you, you know, it, it, like I said, he's, he's a bunch of hot air that's after money. If you want to give him the position, give him the position, but give it to him at, you know, $100,000 a year. Cut his salary way down, see if he'll still work with you. He's just in it for the money. Don't hire him. All right. I'm not going to say one word one way or the other about Mr. Silveri. What I want to talk about this evening is the process that you went through. I remember back way too long ago when I was in graduate school, I took a communications class. And our professor pointed out to us that communication is a two-way street. There's a sender and there is a receiver. Mr. Silveri covered that. We all need to listen to each other. The question I have for you is, how did you communicate to each other that you were going to come with one candidate? I've read all the, the well-crafted emails where we all got to sit there for 
an hour, two hours, five hours, 10 hours, it was maybe 12 hours for sure, to write a well-crafted email that said, this is my position. But the reality of the situation is, is there was a disconnect here. And you will never, ever, as a team, and I've led teams, you will never have any kind of cohesiveness cohesiveness, excuse me, cohesiveness, if you don't communicate and you don't say, this is the direction I want to go, do you agree or don't you agree? Now, if a board member doesn't respond to you, shame on them. But when this is done in the background, it doesn't work. I've talked to some board members. I put it out there. I said, this is what I think we're going to do and so on and so on and so on. It doesn't work. And why you're here tonight and you don't have a consensus or even you have people who are basically feel like it's being rammed down their throat is because you didn't communicate it properly. And Madam President, shame on you. You know better than this. I've told you before, you're herding cats, and, there are, and, and you need to get them in line. And the only way they get in line is if you talk to them and you say, this is what I want to do to all of them, not some, all. Because at the end of the day, you're one-seventh of a vote. You're not the queen. You're not the king. You're not the CEO. You have the title of president, which means at the end of the day, you can run a meeting, 15 seconds, I know, you can run the meeting, you can set the agenda. And if you want to truly bring back harmony, or you want to try and at least herd a couple of these cats in, you got to talk to them beforehand, not at the last minute. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I would agree with what I heard tonight. The board's not true to the process. And I know if I was on the board, I'd be angry as well for not going through the whole process of letting all the board members get involved. I mentioned it in the opening meeting, the opening part of this meeting, collaboration, nil. Uh, totally directed by one person. I mean, it's just suspect itself. So you're not being truthful to your whole self in your whole, your jobs as board members. Mr. Silveri may be the best person for the job at the end of the day. However, the board members do not know this unless they actually look at three to five more candidates. So he could be the very best person for the job. In fact, as I told one member here, he could be uh, last more than a year, two years, three years, potentially, if he wanted to. So if he's picked, I'm going to be asking him to straighten out the board. Thank you. Um, I have to say that the news of our former superintendent resigning was not unwelcomed, but I can't say that it was a good thing for our district at this time either. It is hard to look beyond the serious concerns and legal matters Dr. Shaner is directly or indirectly responsible for putting upon our district and not feel the weight of what is left for our board and our administration to continue to reveal and rectify for our district. I hope his resignation brings hope for a brighter future of leadership to come eventually. However, the current actions of our board in how they worked to find a new person for even an interim superintendent behind the scenes is completely unacceptable as it stands. This doesn't bode well for how the search and hiring of an ideal candidate for a permanent superintendent for our district would be conducted. This has many people rightly concerned. Moving forward is a necessity, but acting like nothing wrong was ever done by those who appeared to want to, to want to act like it is not an option. It is time to enact policies to return appropriate powers and responsibilities to the board and to get the majority board serious about fulfilling their oaths of office. No superintendent ought to have the kind of control over a public institution the former superintendent had finagled or which the current board president is trying to pursue for her own position now. Moving forward requires positive change. In certain circles, Mr. Silveri might look like a decent option to work with 
work with us to heal our district and move forward positively. His resume is long and varied. It concerns me, though, that his very outward, partisan-minded personal status still comes from deep within the bureaucratic walls of the public education system and doesn't appear to have much evidence of the neutral, broad-minded person kind of person that we need here, listening to all voices and getting our board members to effectively work together to do the same for the good of the district and our children's education. Since this appears, though, to be a foregone conclusion tonight of his hiring at this point, Mr. Silveri, I would like to offer a word of advice. Your ears would be well served truly listening to the entire district by seeking input and truly attending to the varied and relevant voices of all perspectives in our community, not only those who share your clearly strong personal beliefs. I hope you will strive to navigate our district to be a more unified place, ready for a new permanent superintendent to take us into a brighter future. So you all um, chose, uh, I, I won't say you all, certain people chose, uh, certain people from this board chose to ch uh, have one person as uh, to be interviewed for this position. When normally you have uh, at least three, four, maybe five people to interview for your position. And you didn't, it doesn't matter whether all of you unanimously decide uh, yes and to hire this person. Because even if, we, we all know, even if it's not unanimous, you're gonna hire him anyway. You have one person interviewed and it's constantly it happens this way. Even if Andrew and Carol Beth oppose anything, it still gets decided if it's majority decision, which shouldn't be. If in this room, if we were to vote whether to um, vote out, the five of you out of these positions, I assure you, you would get voted out if we were to vote today. And we should vote that. All right, that was the last card I had. I too am very disappointed in your process. I would not want to be somebody who has to sit on the board tonight and without any discussion besides 45 minutes for one of the most important positions that we need to help fill this spot between now and the time you hire somebody else. I don't think it's right, it's not fair for our students at all that rash decisions are made so quick because if all we have is 45 minutes to choose somebody and, and listen to comments and questions, then I don't see that there's a value in the person that you're, we're asking questions of. Because that, that position is more than that. Our district has gone through so much in the past four to five years that it is, it's really upsetting that we have not made a chance, had a chance to correct this and move forward in a positive fashion, okay? I too also do not believe that anyone who is to take on an interim position should have any other position that they are working at that time. Either their focus is on, is on our school district and our students because you can't do two jobs today. Not in a school district our size and with the amount of situ uh, issues that we have going on. And that was why on my uh, thing also, I put that I wanted that you do need to do a forensic audit. You've just gone through a major thing having a superintendent leave the school district, right? So you have to go through this whole process. This is the best time to instill positive, a positive environment back into our community about the school board itself and what you're doing to our community. And I'm saying this from having to listen to what the public says all the time, the residents are saying, the students are saying. We have to take a stand, you do, to make sure that you're going to do all the right things and start with a clean slate. Prove that you guys are doing the right thing and do a forensic audit to start a clean slate and move forward. Because to me, that's more important than bringing somebody in that has to just work through the next 10 to 12 months, because I can tell you it's going to be very hard with the amount of publicity our school district has out there 
to have anyone of value to come into the school district and stay as our superintendent. And you really should think about that. And it's because of our students that need this. Our, our world has changed, as it's been talked about already tonight, of what the future for our kids looks like and how it's going to change. And we need more steadfast togetherness at this table to work towards that. And I would hope that you would correct all your processes to where everyone has an equal say, because no matter what, when one person doesn't have a say and know about something that comes up like this, the whole world knows now. Your time is up. Thank, Thank you. you. I didn't get my full three minutes. Thank you. No, um, no I'm I didn't get my full three minutes. You walked I didn't finish. get my full three minutes. Excuse you me. You work for the taxpayers, us, and Mrs. you need Teddy. to make decisions in the best interest of our children, and you don't. You need to think about that. Mrs. Baggett. So I think that um, the reason I wanted to speak was because I was confused by how this all worked out. Last Monday, I guess it was the 14th, you had a, um, the MASB come and give suggestions on looking for a superintendent. I didn't come to the meeting. The meeting was open. There was public comment. I was watching the meeting at home and um, raising my questions to different board members through email. And I'm wondering why the board president didn't mention in public at that meeting the process for finding the interim superintendent. The whole public would have known what the process was. In an open meeting, in an open forum, educating everybody here, educating your fellow board members what the board president was going to do the next day when she sent out the email stating, this is what I have selectively decided to do. So, you know, I think it's very disingenuous the way the whole process went. No offense to you, sir. But, um, you know, it's about transparency. It's about not infuriating the public continuously with your lack of transparency. And in that public forum, nobody said anything about this interim selection process. I watched the whole meeting. All of a sudden, an email came out saying, this is what I've decided. It's not supposed to work like that. I think that's why you're getting a lot of blowback right now about this whole process and about your candidate. And that's all I have to say. All right, so at this point, we have a motion to appoint Mr. Severi to the position of interim superintendent and to approve the contract as presented. Madam all President. Those, Mrs. Lacoui. Um, I move to amend this motion by postponing the vote 30 days. Um, so you would like to read that motion to me then? I don't have your motion in front of me. Or no. So you want to move to appoint Mr. Severi to the position of interim superintendent and to approve the contract in 30 days? Potentially, yeah. It, I'm suggesting, or perhaps we need to, perhaps we, we need to do more than amend it. It's the intent of this motion well, is to give us. You can make a motion to amend at this point. Otherwise, this would need to be voted down, and then you could make a subsequent motion. Perhaps I'll, I'll explain the intent of what I'm doing because I'm listening to the community. We've talked about how the process was flawed. If we if we postpone this vote and we see whether or not there are any other candidates that would come forward or we want to discuss this more as a vote board and vet, you know, in whatever way that we want to do, we might still end up wanting to choose Mr. Silveri, but it would give us the time to do the process the right way. Um, so you just want to make a motion to postpone? Just to postpone. All right, so there is a motion to postpone by um, Mrs. Lacui. Is there support? by Mr. Weaver. Um, we heard one, anyone else have any comments on this? I mean, I know quite honestly I will be voting against this as I feel that Mr. Silveri is the right candidate. I'm not sure he would be available in 30 days, but that is um, 
you know, that's my reason for voting against this. Anyone else have a comment? I just, again, don't see what the rush is. If, again, if he's not available in 30 days, and if he's probably not the right candidate, there's a long list out there. There's other candidates that have been brought to our attention from past um, RCS employees that have good recommendations. Again, this just didn't have to be done this way, and there's no reason to rush. We've operated without a superintendent for this long. We, again, have not set any expectations for what we want them to accomplish. That is the board's responsibility. Again, we all went through superintendent training, evaluation training. like. When are we going to start using any of the training that we actually go through? So again, I don't think there's any harm in waiting 30 days. End of the day, if he's not available, someone else will be. And again, we can move forward doing the process the right way. Start actually rebuilding trust with the community. That is more important than this decision tonight. $33,000 All right. This is Lakui. Just another point to add is that um, if we give it a little bit more time and don't rush the decision, I think that it could help the community feel better about the decision being made and following you know, a process that includes the full board in the decision. It also could potentially put Mr. Silveri in a better spot, you know, knowing that you know, he's not being thrust into this position in the midst of, you know. I guess I, I would just ask, what, what do you foresee happening in the next, you know, until this is voted on? Like I said, we could, take a look, see, are there any other candidates we might want to consider? Is there any way we might want to adjust the contract before approving it? We haven't had much time to really take a look at this to see whether there's any other possibilities. We've been notified a, a couple days ago. So it just gives a little bit more time. And then in 30 days, hopefully it can settle down. We can choose someone and move forward and truly begin that healing process. I think the way the process came about, um, was it was unfortunate that in the way that it came about all right so we have a motion to uh postpone all of those in favor please say aye, aye. opposed please say no 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 that's a two five vote the vote um the motion will not be postponed we're back to the original motion to appoint Mr. Silveri to the position of interim superintendent and to approve the contract. Contract. All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. One. Nay. So it's a 6-1 Nay. vote. Um, Mr. Silveri, congratulations. Um, you have been appointed as our interim superintendent. Um, 